What's up, Goth Gamer Nation? Been meaning to do one of these for a while. I, I didn't. I don't have an excuse. Anyway, I've collected some questions off of Discord, uh, some of which have been omitted for being repeats. So, uh, sorry if your question does not appear. Yeah, so let's get started. Uh, Wicca asks, how are you? I'm okay. Glad to have the last video done as the length and new additions and getting so close to my self-imposed deadline uh, made it like a slowly expanding anxiety explosion. But I rewarded myself with carne asada fries and that feeling has slightly subsided and now the whole exhilarating process begins anew. Uh, Outlander asks, Martian Gothic unification when? Soon. Got it right here. Every once in a while I look at it and I say soon. So that is what I said to you. Thank you for your questions. I forgot to thank, thank both of you for your questions. M asks, will you consider doing an album of the year list around December? I absolutely would consider that. I, I don't want to make a hard promise on it, but I certainly thought about that. And if time allows for it, then heck yeah. Thank you for your question. Space Chad asks, around what season of Supernatural would you really call the decline of quality? Sammy. You didn't put an exclamation point, so I'm assuming that was the inflection you wanted me to say that. <laughs> uh, honestly, I, I, I'd say it really technically begins once Eric Kripke leaves as showrunner at the end of season five. And I wouldn't even say it's an immediate plummet. It's more like the spark that is the thing that I appreciate starts to flicker until around season nine when it's it's really faded and, and beyond that, it's just like crushing darkness. But even in that dark, I wouldn't say it's, uh, you know, void of the occasional glimmer of that old light. I also think removing the road trip aspect of it when they get a stationary home base was like one of the biggest missteps and that like completely betrays so much of the charm of the show. Thank you for your question. Uh, Marky Mark asks, have have you ever watched The Sopranos? I've shamefully uh, only watched the first season, uh, which I thought was really good, but I think I was watching it on like a borrowed HBO account years ago that I've since lost access to. I don't even think HBO Max existed yet. I would like to continue watching it because I I'm aware of how influential and important it was. Also, it looks like we're getting a uh, expanded universe with these uh, films, so I should probably jump on that. Thank you for your question. Tristanium asks, will there be darkened streams for X files uh you know i'd like to do that but also in a way there already is thank you for your question uh james Tauhau asks considering you try to get the games you review how many do you own physically and in what state uh that i've reviewed maybe like 30 to 35 out of those 100 physically uh there are a lot that are you know digital or just not realistic for me to collect like you're you're not going to catch me buying a copy of fallout or gothos anytime soon you know i i love looking at my, at my beautiful boxes but i'm you know barely getting to a place where I can comfortably feed myself and I don't think I need to drop the excess of $200 on a paper box. But in general, if I can own it physically, I, I try to go that route. I don't know if that's been normalized for younger people born in, in the mid-2000s or that was already being phased out, but I haven't really let go of the desire to receive a physical, tangible object in, in exchange for monies. Thank you for your question. Um... Can a block of cheddar be goth asks, is there any non-video game game related media you played, i.e. World of Darkness, Dungeons and Dragons, Cypher, etc.? I, I have played Dungeons and Dragons as a neutral evil elf named Leaf, uh, who is just, you know, kind of a, he's, he's kind of a fucker. Uh, you know, whenever we'd loot the bodies at the end of a fight, I'd try to use sleight of hand to take you know, more shit without my party seeing and stuff. I wanted him to be not actively working against the party, but like letting them know I, I, I find them disposable. Uh, I, I've also played Vampire the Masquerade, which was the 20th anniversary edition because the fifth edition uh, it sounded kind of removed from what interests me about vampires. Uh, my character was a Nosferatu podcaster. Very easy to slip into that role, surprisingly. Thank you. For your question. Victor asks, favorite US state, there is a correct answer. And judging by this emoji, I feel like I'm being led to say Texas be because of that, but uh, it is not Texas. <laughs> I've spent enough time there to be quite sure that I could do without it. Uh, also, uh, politically, very disappointing lately. Uh, 
not that they've been any better now that I think about it, but uh, I'll tentatively say uh, Minnesota just because I like how cold it stays for extended periods of time. I get to wear a fucking coat. It's pretty great. I could have meant that to just say any any state I get to wear a coat in. That that isn't also you know some backwards ass Far Cry Five world. Thank you for your question. You know what? I retract that. I'm gonna go back and say my state, California, because of Mexican food. Thank you again for your question. Uh, Reggie asks, how did you like your latest rewatch of Buffy and Angel? I, I'm still in the middle of it. I've been going through both by air date, following a little guide, and I'm currently in Buffy season five, Angel season two, and oh boy. It's a little rough at first. I, I should say I, I had seen Angel. I really liked that show when I was younger, but I missed most of Buffy. I was familiar with the more famous episodes like Hush, but I had never watched more than you know a few random episodes. I feel like in season four, it really hit its stride. Um, plus there's an episode with a <laughs> wall. <laughs> wow. I still like the vibe of Angel more because it's closer to something like World of Darkness. There's a noir quality to it, and from the beginning it depicts the Buffyverse as less black and white. You know, we can befriend demons and other creatures. The world is, is a little more adult and complicated. It's also substantially more uh, early 2000s edgy, which is, is essentially my aesthetic. I just watched this episode where Faith is dancing in a club while beating people up to a remix of Living Dead Girl, and that's just... Uh, that's it. That's, that's what I want, baby. Uh, Buffy does get there, but for a long time, it's just, you know, monsters, bad people, good. It's been really charming, though. I, I think it as a whole has won me over, and I've been living the, the, the emotional roller coaster, like, laughably late. I, I think I knew that I was hooked when they see season four spoiler. Um confirm that willow is by because when they introduced uh tara I, I was honestly just confused by what they were trying to do with their character like why does every interaction with them have this weird shifty energy to it and she never brings her around the others and I'm like why has this character been so far removed from everything else and then she says the uh i'm yours line and i literally fucking screamed i am you know Yours. Because I, I had I had done a 180 on Seth Green. At first, I was like, "What the f Family Guy guy is here? What, he's gonna be your boyfriend for this whole show?" And then he had won me over, uh, like right as he bailed from the show. Uh, and then this shit happened, and I was so happy for Willow <laughs> to the to the point where they bring Oz back for an episode, you know, to complicate things with her girlfriend. And I'm just like, Oz, get the fuck out of here. You need to get the fuck out of here, dude. The cutest shit is in the in the world is going on, and, and I'll kill you with a bazooka if you ruin it. Thank you for your question. Space Chad asks, if there were any one of your videos that you would like to redo, which one would it be? I have genuinely considered just redoing my Nocturne video because uh, even as I made it the first time, I felt like I'm not creatively ready to relate my feelings about this game and like what it means to me and how it captured my imagination. But I'm sure uh, if I lingered on that thought long enough, there would just be a hard line where everything beyond it I would do over. It's a, it's a shame there has to be a record of the channel's growing pains, but, but definitely at least Nocturne. I, th I think it deserves better than that video. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Uh, HaleyB1231 asks, How come you bullied me when I slid into- uh, uh oh Totally not a mimic asks, What happened to the quotes during the video intros? I probably overlooked an explanation about it. Honestly, you're the first person to bring that up, uh, which is testament to why I, I never needed to add an explanation about it. <laughs> sounds dumb now, but it was just another thing I would get fixated on that would stall me in the editing process. I get distracted really easily and fall down uh, like internet rabbit holes and when I'm supposed to start editing and I just you get lost in thought about what would be an interesting quote to open the video so I think I just got rid of them to help me stay on task and you get rid of one of a million things I'd, I'd waste time overthinking. Thank you for your question. Uh, Evil Bunny 67 asks, do you still do your Disney podcast? I do not. That's the gamble you make when you start a podcast with someone you're dating. Thank you for your question. Melon asks, have you ever considered reviewing music? I'd be down to hear your thoughts on some fresh experimental tunes in the future. Also Homeworld and Bionicle point and click game reviews when? I I'm more uh, leery about being critical with music as opposed to other mediums. Something about it makes it more 
personal and I feel less comfortable doing it. The fact that I barely understand how music works also strength strengthens that, I'd, I'd imagine. So when I do videos about music, I've tried to keep it to, you know, here are some things I like, perhaps you will also like, which uh, at the moment I just find more worth creating and consuming than uh, here's some shit I don't like. Look at this dummy following his stupid ass dreams. Uh, also, I'm assuming the second part of your question is a joke, so I will rightfully laugh at it. Haha. -ha and move on. Thank you for your question. Dizzle asks, have you considered reviewing any of the Resident Evil games or do you believe that they are inferior to Silent Hill and aren't worth talking about? Love the videos. Um, yeah, I would. They just don't feel high on my priority list because I doubt there's a shortage of Resident Evil content to consume. Also, uh, I love Resident Evil 1, 2, and Nemesis, and I feel like my opinions on any of the other ones might just disappoint people. <laughs> uh, I, I would say uh, narratively and in for a lot of reasons, Silent Hill is a more interesting franchise than Resident Evil to me, but it's also a dead one. <laughs> And both Resident Evil and Silent Hill have their fair share of uh, oopsies. But both are uh, important to me for their earlier entries. Thank you for your question. Uh, TCS asks, can we get a clear pic of the phone? It looks great. Uh, yeah, it's right. What? Is, is right here. The fuck? Shadow Ranger asks, what's your favorite video you've made and the least favorite one uh this probably sounds like a cheat answer but my favorite video is usually the last video i made uh and then with each preceding video my pride and fondness of it depreciates so by that metric i guess the siberia video is my least favorite and at this moment the Mizerna falls one is my favorite <laughs> thank you for your question derp delios asks have you tried other artistic works aside from music it's pretty dope by the way uh, i think doodles were my first artistic outlet and that went into uh, digital art and graphic design which i went to school for and i don't get to flex too much lately like aside from the graphics i use for logos and whatnot the last substantial thing i doodled was this uh shirt design that you can buy from the link in the description it's a little pricey but it's uh it's very soft but I've always had a, a fascination with sort of like, like mascot imagery, uh, like 1930s Disney or Fleischer shit, or what Zoomers might refer to as Cuphead shit. Um, I think that has informed a lot of my doodles. Thank you for your question. Uh, Tristanium asks, sorry for the second question, but will there be more music in the future? Love those. Yep. Uh, I think so. I, I'm always making it. It's just the, the finishing and committing to like making it public part that always always gets me. Eventually, uh, I'll parse through my mess of folders and cobble something together. Thank you for your question. As Danto asks, favorite video game by console generation? I entered the games gamer sphere at generation four with a super nintendo that was my first home console that I was like you know cognizant of, of reality for and i think that the library for the super nintendo is, is pretty untouchable compared to everything else that generation um my favorite of that console was pr probably either uh super castlevania 4 or secret of evermore it's hard to pick through though because I, I attach so much nostalgia to to a bunch of those games you know super metroid very rad very rad uh fifth generation I had only ever owned a PS1 and I rented Castlevania Symphony of the Night from Premiere Video, the local video store, and it, it was love. That is probably just my favorite game in general, um, but I have trouble committing to that. Silent Hill is probably not far behind. Sixth generation, I was a, I was a big supporter and defender of the Dreamcast. I, I naively, full-heartedly believed the world would recognize how innovative it was and how, uh, you know, how much potential was there. And my favorite game for it was probably Nightmare Creatures 2. Just uh, adored the vibe of it, was intrigued by the world and the use of Rob Zombie again. You use anything from Hellbilly Deluxe and... You, 
you got me. Honestly, I was I was just so infatuated with the console itself that I'd play anything on it. I even liked Sonic Adventure and Crazy Taxi. When it was clear the PS2 was, was going to far overshadow Dreamcast, I went with PS2. Favorites for that would be predictable. Silent Hill 2, Snake Eater. Maybe I'll just say Snake Eater since Silent Hill 2 was on PC and had a superior version on Xbox. Seventh generation, I had assumed I would remain loyal to PlayStation, but the launch for it, for the PlayStation 3, was kind of a mess and it was an unheard of price point, so I broke the chain and went with Xbox 360, which I didn't have for very long before it red ringed and died. Tried to get it fixed in Mexico and that held for a few months, but then it died pretty definitively. Uh, but probably Condemned or Alan Wake, which both wound up on PC anyway, so we can do. Oh, The Darkness, that never made it to PC. Yeah. I can go with that. This is where most games also, you know, wound up on PC. So I didn't really participate much in Generation 8 outside the Switch, which I haven't touched in a, in a while. Um, but I did really enjoy Breath of the Wild, which was a big surprise to me because I've never had any affinity for Zelda as a franchise. Um, but I was, I was quite taken by that game. And I don't know shit about the current generation, so TBD. Thank you for your question. Outlander asks, what, in your opinion, is the most underappreciated slash underrepresented genre of game? I think the wave of point-and-click adventure games that followed Myst doesn't get acknowledged as much as it deserves. The horror-themed ones, especially. Uh, games that incorporated lots of FMV and aim for this adult cinematic experience like uh, Ripper, Black Dahlia, Gabriel Knight 2, Phantasmagoria 2. Uh, I think they still retain so much charm but don't often get the love they deserve and when they are brought up it's mostly to poke fun at them uh, which is easy but I still think that was a rich vein for creativity and just like this pocket of gaming that can't really be repeated. Thank you for your question. Manigoldo asks, have you ever experienced any paranormal activity in your life? I feel like I've been very open to it, but nothing I couldn't explain uh, with sleep paralysis or exhaustion. Um, I have dated a few people who very firmly believed in, in the paranormal and had their own experiences. Uh, and these were people, you know, I believed in and trusted enough to live with. So I, I had doubts naturally, but I, I believe that they experienced something that was real to them. One of them, when they were going to university, they stayed with a friend that lived nearby and you know, she would return with these like fucked up stories of what was going on in this house and you know these things she was experiencing, all of which sound very textbook. You like watch any episode of The Haunting? It's uh, it's like that stuff. And she'd be like inconsolable. To, uh, and this was a very real thing for them. And I don't know how to maintain, you know, the image of a stoic skeptic there. Uh, I'm sure most of it was shit, you know, they don't want to hear at the time. So I tried to take their experience as valid while also, you know, softly trying to uh, reason that there are explanations for things. At, at the heart of it, I think it was that she lived with someone who was enabling these thoughts and like confirming every bit of it. Like, yeah, yeah, there is a fucking presence in this house. I heard that too. Uh, I, I visited this house once and they had told me you know, that the height of this activity came about in one room and one closet and I don't know if she ever learned that I did this. It's just, it's the most I've humored this sort of thing. But I went into that room and I stood in front of the open closet uh, and just started like talking out loud. Like, uh, I don't think you're real. So why don't you do something? Show me you're real. Um, yeah, and then it said, Thank you for your question. Frog asks, <laughs> a little picture of a frog. What is your favorite OST from the PS1 era? Uh... Again, Symphony of the Night and Silent Hill. But since that isn't surprising or interesting, I will add Destruction Derby 2, which is a game I have never played and don't have any interest in playing, but I've, I've sure listened to the soundtrack a lot. Big fan of Jug. Thank you for your question. Uh, Dregor asks, what is your favorite game that would be a terrible fit for this channel's type of brand? 
Um, I have enjoyed a lot of JRPGs, especially from the PS1 era. You know, Final Fantasies 7, 8, 9, uh, Legend of Dragoon, Xenogears, Star Ocean, Vagrant Story, that kind of thing. I wouldn't rule out covering them, but I feel like it is a noticeably different vibe than the one I've been cultivating. I'd, I'd also include the Kingdom Hearts into that as well. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Quirky asks, is there a video game genre you'd like to try but haven't gotten around to for whatever reason? Yeah, for a long time I've been apprehensive about games tagged with things like survival or crafting, uh, kind of like Subnautica or The Long Dark or The Forest. It's something that I feel like I would like, but I guess I've just seen too many games that get these sorts of things wrong, uh, and a lot of them look like a real time sink, uh, but, but I would like to be more open to them at some point. Thank you for your question. Gruel asks, hey Grim, you have an absolutely killer taste in music and you got me into Cyberactive, which somehow had slipped me by despite loving Frontline Assembly and Puppy. I'm curious to know what your favorite Skinny Puppy album is and barring that favorite electro industrial in general. Kind of a basic answer, but I really fell in love with Skinny Puppy with Rabies, which I think they have even expressed that they don't really like that album, but um, I, ha I have a habit of liking albums that bands have disowned. Uh, like, I, I love With Sympathy by Ministry and Us and Them by Godflesh, and like both of them have expressed that they'd just rather sweep that one under the rug. Uh, and I think I like all three specifically because they are sort of stylistic outliers, uh, experiments that pay off to varying degrees. There isn't a Skinny Puppy record that I don't like. Uh, but I latched onto that one specifically, and I, I think you can hear its influence in the new opening track I made for the channel. Like, the instrumental is essentially a dollar store version of Fascist Jock Itch. I'll, I'll probably post that full thing on the channel, but... You know, like a lot of things, I just have to commit to a finished version of it. Thank you for your question. Baron Von Bad Beaver asks, You like motorcycles? Yes or yes. Also, how are you doing? You doing okay? Look, um, I'd like them a lot more if they stopped ruining takes when I'm recording and making my walls rattle. Uh, I'm okay for the most part. Better than I was last year, but it's fucking miserable hot right now. Anyway, thanks for your question. <laughs> uh, Sargon of ACAB asks, where did the name of the channel come from? Uh, it was just a, a screen name I'd used for things starting with a World of Warcraft character, but really I, I don't have a great uh, story behind it. Uh, it was just the thing I used for things. So because of that, the channel was also almost named Sleep is Wrong, which is just the other name I use for things. And I do think that is a better channel name, but also I I would have been referred to as Sleep by shorthand, which is I think less less cool than Grim. But yeah, I, I, I had, a, had a Grim beard, was making a dwarf character, and thought it sounded like a gothy short king. I think since then there has been some character from the How to Train Your Dragon extended universe that has been given that name, but I, I denounce that. I denounce that as a false idol. Thank you for your question. Uh, Those Asteroid Blues asks, will you ever cover any other TV shows in the future? Cough Twin Peaks Cough. Uh, I, I would love to, but I have sort of locked myself into a long project here. Uh, mostly as a goof, but I commit to my goofs. So either I accelerate it or I do two different ones concurrently or abandon one. It's definitely something uh, I I'll be thinking about. Thank you for your question. James Tauhau asks, how do you like your coffee? When I started drinking coffee, I think I wanted it as far removed from coffee as possible with, uh, you know, sweeteners and flavors and shit. But as as time marches on, I've, I've preferred it darker and darker and more basic and bitter. Though every once in a while when I do want that sweetness back, there's a, a cafe near me that does this lavender oat milk latte thing. Breve, is that, I believe, what the term for it? Um, that thing fucks. Thank you for your question. F. Grison asks, who's your favorite mod? Whichever one has the highest kill count. Thank you for your question. Kamihog asks, I know being openly left-wing and being 
in the gamer space can't be easy, so how do you feel with being a so-called gamer, but obviously not aligning to all the bullshit that comes with that tag? Uh, it's, it's funny that in my head I wasn't doing that, but I guess saying something as benign as racism is bad in a video about a video game that chose to address racism, or uh, taking a swipe uh, at, at Joe Rogan, who, you know, a lot worse should be said about, uh, is all it takes to get a bunch of messages from people unsubbing, like I give a fuck to know you're leaving. Just get out of here. <coughs> <coughs> that was initially bothersome to me. Now I think it's kind of funny, and I guess my strategy at the moment is I derive pleasure from insulting them. Uh, more than ever, we see how awful great swaths of gamers and game industry types are, and uh, if you're someone who takes me saying something like gamers are misogynist or transphobic to heart, uh, then I think that may be a bit of a self-report. You might want to examine that about yourself because if you if you're one of the good ones i think you just say oh well clearly clearly he's not talking about me and then you move on thank you for your question uh creep asks do you actually enjoy supernatural uh yeah i wholeheartedly think there's a lot of good in that series and a lot of unmet potential. I, I thought it would be more interesting to cover because I do have more critical feelings about it. There are episodes I don't like, seasons I don't like, but there is a lot I do like. I don't think that should be read exactly as I think it's a good show overall, but I would say I enjoy it. Yes, or at least a lot of it. Thank you for your question. Kokiri Wolf asks, what's your favorite part of making videos? Least favorite? <laughs> Least favorite? <clears throat> editing mostly it's uh it's the exciting part for me seeing all the pieces slide into place but lately i've found a lot of enjoyment in doing uh like foley work essentially because when i do anything live action it's using a camera that captures unusable sound and i've had a lot of fun just making sound effects essentially least favorite is writing because it's the part that feels the least uh, actively creative to me especially because so much of the video comes together during editing like i'll just cut whole minutes out or add a bunch of shit i didn't consider before or that wouldn't make sense to write down i'm, I'm sure it's different for most creators but it's just the part that feels the most like homework Work. I don't get an immediate hit of accomplishment out of it. Thank you for your question. Ali Go Beep Boop asks, why don't you love me? Um, it, it's just the vibe's all wrong, so what can you do? Thank you for your question. Lady Bastos asks, seeing the recent public uptake the UFO phenomenon, how are you feeling about UFOs? Feeling like you want to reread Communion? Is that me? Uh, you put that exclamation point in there. Okay, all right. I get what you mean. Yeah, I have been th thinking about rereading it. I'm a fan of that book and some of its sequels. It's surreal to have, you know, the military and Obama at the very least acknowledge what I guess is now UAPs and like, you know, give a collective, I don't fucking know what's going on there. I, I probably would have paid more attention to this like four or five years ago, but in the interim, I have been soured on most conspiracy theories. Some did have this, this like nugget of validity which was like personally interesting to explore but now all of them feel so often wrapped up in uh, the narrative of like right-wing insanity where everything is a rabbit hole that leads to you know reptilians and satanic masons and, and gang stalkers with sonic weapons um <laughs> the, the ufo stuff is interesting but why would we ever get a, a clear answer about any of that especially if they are actually some kind of uh, experimental unmanned craft that the u.s or its enemies have created or you know it's a mylar balloon shaped like a spaceman who knows thank you for your question Oatsies asks can you describe to us what you are like keep your anonymity with names but what led you to make this channel have your sense of humor enjoy the classics etc thank you what led me to creating the channel was i i already dabbled in all the things it re requires to make a channel you know writing editing and graphic design stuff and i noticed this kind of like video essay format appearing on youtube and i watched uh, s some people creating that and began to feel like there was sort of two camps these covered one is the cynical angry man that points and laughs at games uh, and the other is the smug game expert 
that has some intense infatuation with one genre or era of games. I think that that has been diluted considerably since, you know, 2010 or whenever I first started thinking about it. And I just wanted to create things and have a dialogue about games that wasn't so binary or fandom based, if that makes any sense. I never wanted to seem dismissive of the work and art that goes into making a game or too revelatory in the faults of games. And I wanted to acknowledge that there are games and parts of games that resonate with you on some emotional or ethereal level that you can't really put under a clinical microscope yeah because it's an art form i do break these rules occasionally for the sake of humor but i like to think i've somewhat stuck to that except sports games those belong in a dumpster you see what i mean I am not sure I could point to what informed my sense of humor. I, I grew up with a lot of UK sitcoms and sketch shows because that's just what was imparted to me through my family. You know, so a lot of uh, Monty Python, Blackadder, The Young Ones, Red Dwarf, and I think that continued into adulthood. Uh, like that was just what read to me as funny. So I was big into like spaced black books uh, and jam. That one was a big deal to me. The sort of like atmospheric editing and that show informed a lot of what I make. I don't know if Peep Show inspired to some degree the FPS thing I go for, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised because I did watch a lot of that. As far as enjoying the classics, I think the bulk of what I cover is, is just what I played growing up, which is often whatever I could find in the bargain bin at Kmart or something. Thank you. For your question, Frog asks, I love your music, what is your inspiration, or which artists, or any other things? Hmm. Uh, mid-90s to early 2000s, industrial and EBM, it mainly. Skinny Puppy, KMFDM, Nitzareb, Broken EP era Nine Inch Nails, Acumen Nation, Pig Face, Portion Control, Ministry, uh, some others that are cancelled, but you could probably guess. Uh, electronic stuff from that era as well, like Prodigy, Crystal Method, and Meat Beat Manifesto. Uh, and then, uh, I don't know, sample-based, like, plunderphonic kind of shit, uh, like Negative Land and My Life with the Thrill Kill Cult. Also, just like the first 20 minutes of The Matrix and uh, the Spawn soundtrack. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Master Nunius asks, where are you from? The internet! Thank you for your question. Sargon of Acab asks, do you own any rare games? I think so. Uh, I don't know if they're particularly valuable or anything, um, but some of them I don't think you'd come across all that often. This uh, boxed copy of Harvester in, in pretty good condition is, is probably rare, uh, if only because there can't be too many in circulation, but I don't think it's all that highly sought after. Anyway, I think this copy of The Ring for Dreamcast is pretty rare. That was actually a gift from uh, a, a kind master of games. Thank you for your question. How Satonic asks, what is your favorite Digimon? Uh, I think I watched some of that show when it first aired over here, um, but but it didn't really appeal to me in the same way Pokemon did, so I couldn't tell you any of them. Um, I just googled goth Digimon and saw this pumpkin guy, appropriately named Pumpkinmon, and he seems pretty tight. Thank you for your question. Ballsy asks, what equipment slash software do you use to make those absolute banger songs? Also, next album, when? Uh, I use FL Studio 12, which I imagine is far outdated by now, and the VST plugin Massive, as well as a sound bank. I've just collected over time of old drum machines and video game sound effects and shit. That's it, really. Uh, I use the same mic that I record voiceover with, uh, which, is a, which is a Yeti, and I just turn the gain down and stand a little further away from it. Uh, and, and next album soon I, I i think i have i'm getting close to like having enough material for one thank you for your question uh f grison asks real one hard one what's your favorite of your first 50 videos that is hard as i'm thinking this I'm, I'm realizing how predictably i think but video number 50 at least as far as upload order is nox and i remember there was this window of time with nox it was like nox echo knight and alice where i really started to think that someday i could do this all the time i felt like i was getting better at it and i was thinking about the channel more than anything and i just vividly remember this feeling of hope that, that stirred in that area so i'd say nox thank you for your question. Uh, Sleepy Poss asks, what's your favorite color slash brand of nail polish? And Geodream asks, congratulations on making it this long. What is your favorite color nail polish? I like cornflower blue. Right now, my favorites are, now oh, let me just, I can actually just read the fanciful names on the bottle. Uh, Cinesnap, which is like a dark red, 
and detox my socks off. Don't know what the, that is in reference to, but it's like a light blue, not too far from cornflower. I don't really have a brand preference, uh, but I've mainly stuck to OPI and Sally Hansen because they're very cheap on Amazon. Thank you for your questions. Scum with boundaries asks, at what length does a beard get grim? I don't think it's a matter of length. I think it's just the place you're in psychologically when it appears. Thank you for your question. Thy Rourke asks, fiction and or non-fiction badass lady of choice, reign it assumed, so choose another. I've really come around on Faith from the Buffy Angel verse. I think because she has a lot of depth, but she's also super intimidating. Like it's, it's effectively tense and scary when she goes after any of the main cast because she essentially has superpowers, but doesn't have any control of them. You know, she has all of Buffy's powers really, but like nothing to lose. So that's real wild watching that dichotomy. And I, I forgive her for the uh, tribal tattoo. That's fine. We all make mistakes. Thank you for your question. Embersynth asks, do you have a particular game dev that you look up to? Maybe uh, Sam Lake and Remedy. Max Payne 1 and 2 were like game changers for me. And I think everything they've put out since like Alan Wake and Control have been really strong. Quantum Break was the closest thing they've, they've had to like a whiff. Um, but they've always put a lot of inventive and interesting ideas and detail into their games. Also, they put an emphasis on like character and narrative, which I, I appreciate a lot. Thank you for your question. Mild asks, what would be your ideal RPG? Something with a great inventory. Okay, condition number one. Heavy emphasis on exploration. I want caves, I want swamps, and haunted castles maybe. Or if we go modern, I want you know, dark alleyways and condemned buildings. Lastly, I'd like my character model to reflect what I have equipped. The end. Thank you for your question. Zogingu asks, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Look, I... I think my resume speaks for itself, and I await your call. Thank you for your question. Sargon of ACAB asks, how do you recruit mods? Now, I just kind of throw a gun into a ring of people, and whoever gets to it first gets the job. I say, you there. You got moxie, kid. Welcome aboard. Thank you for your question. Julian asks, favorite Vampire the Masquerade clan? Can't believe no one asks this yet. As far as like the whole world of darkness, Nosferatu, the whole uh, skulking around a sewer, hacking into a mainframe in leather bondage gear, is it, pretty much my ideal life. Also, it just makes for interesting gameplay within the tabletop. Uh, for something like Bloodlines, uh, Toreador, just because I want to be like a hot idiot. Thank you for your question. Uh, Swood Operator asks, how do you get around or avoid creative block, both in terms of songwriting, script writing, for your vids, whatever else? I think taking a lot of notes helps, even if it's something small and like could be nothing. I always have a bunch of disassociated bullet points of things I want to get down before they float away in my brain. It's kind of like, there's like a David Lynch video of him talking about ideas as these, you know, things you fish out and like, you know, more might come with it when you like reel one in and that idea that you caught might just be a fragment of the whole whatever it is you're working on but now you have even more bait um and i think that there's a lot of truth to that and taking notes like keeps that thread present in your brain also it's, it's just been a process and it's at a certain point in a block i just have to concede that like my brain's not gonna do it today so either i work on something else or i consume some kind of media in hopes that it you know resets something thank you for your question vars asks do you believe in ghosts uh in a way i think you know they exist as a phenomenon that people experience that's all Thank you for your question. Vallejo Fish asks, what is your favorite fast food meal to order when you are craving shitty food? Jack in the box tacos, very shitty, but also very cheap and have also been a great comfort throughout my life of having no money. <laughs> One of my favorite experiences of having no money, but wanting Jack in the box tacos is, um, I don't even remember the circumstance, but I was wearing very dirty clothes. I think I just didn't clean my clothes and that was it. And uh, like, wild unkempt beard and hair and like i think i, I think it just did look like a wreck and um I, I ordered just two tacos and a cup of water which is like he comes together to like maybe over a dollar it's it's an order that says this is all i can get <laughs> And uh, the, the guy at the window like handed it to me and I was like fumbling for my wallet and he was like dude don't don't worry about it and I, I, I just I gave him a uh, a solemn nod and <laughs> And left. Also, I don't know if they still have it. They had this chicken sandwich called the Cluck Sandwich for a while, uh, and it was like a complete ripoff of the one that Popeyes has. It was just cheaper. 
Very cool. Very cool. Thank you for your question. Uh, Snek Plaskin asks, what are some of your favorite black metal bands? Uh, that I regularly listen to a lot, a lot of like, I guess you could say second wave stuff, like late nineties, early two thousands, uh, Abyssos, Satyricon, Diabolical Masquerade, Immortal, Dissection, uh, Lord Belial. As far as recent stuff, uh, Imperial Triumphant, Dawn Raid, Botanist, and Ghost Bath. I'm sure I could think of like, you know, 10 other ones later, but that's what's coming to me at this moment. Thank you for your question. Tan asks, what are some of your favorite things to cook or bake? Or alternatively, favorites to eat? Uh, those cookies that have like a ghost on them? Cause it's like I'm eating a little ghost. Uh, one time I made these uh, brownies that had Oreos in them, and they were so good that I decided mankind should not have this power. It's very good. Um, I think about it sometimes, but we just shouldn't have it. It's it's unhealthy knowing it exists. Thank you for your question. Elser asks, favorite emoji? Big fan of Coop Thumb. I'm big fan of Careful Now. Thank you for your question. Melon asks, what are your favorite labels besides the Flenser? Wreck me some cool shit, Mr. Man, please. Uh, since we've talked about this before, I'm gonna try to not be too basic and say like Sacred Bones or Sergeant House. Pro probably gonna butcher this, but Aufnahme Vida. Uh, which is a uh, like a German industrial and minimal synth label. Uh, there's a Greek power electronics label called Several Minor Promises. Lots of cool releases from them that I've missed out on, but maybe one day. Uh, and a Belgian label called Alpha Matrix that is home to some fun uh, EBM and agritech projects. Haven't done the deepest dive on their catalog, but what I've heard has been good. Thank you for your question. Jick Magger asks, uh, you bring up some banger comics in your video. I'm quite an enthusiast of Gray and Palmiotti's Jonah Hex stuff myself. You got any personal favorites? Most of the early output of Vertigo comics is what got me into comics. So stuff like Sandman, Preacher, and Hellblazer are very good, but I feel like that's a boring answer. So I'll add Harrow County and its continuing spin-offs, as well as the newest Vampire the Masquerade comic from Vault Comics. Surprisingly good. Thank you for your question. Banana Bread asks, I would like to ask a few questions. One, in one of your videos, you mentioned Have a Nice Life being one of your favorite bands. How do you feel about the other Dan Barrett projects like Blackwing? I, I love both Blackwing and Giles Corey. I think I own every vinyl release Dan Barrett has put out. I don't think he's missed yet, no matter what that fucking melon guy says oh not the melon guy from this video the other melon guy two are there any youtubers who you regularly watch or would recommend to others let it be music or games or whatever really uh as far as what i watch lately it's been a lot of jcs criminal psychology if you're interested in true crime uh again probably gonna butcher it but hall berlin which is a, a daily german dj channel also vox sinistra another DJ channel with an emphasis on uh, industrial and EBM. Lots of good stuff there. Uh, three, what do you think is the best way to get into music production? Uh, steal software and copy what the creators you like are doing for practice. Four, what are some things you wish you knew when starting out with music or even making reviews? Thank you for your answers. I love what you do and congratulations on the 100th review. Thank you very much. I feel like I wasted a lot of time I could have spent building my channel on things other people wanted out of me, and I wish I was able to take the reins of my life a little earlier. Also, there are some sobering lessons you learn when you put yourself out there on a platform like YouTube, especially if you're by nature an anxious or easily overwhelmed person, and I don't know if there's a way to properly prepare for having followers and interacting with them and whatnot. So I guess I wish I could have known not to take certain things personally or dwell on things and that sometimes it's okay to just you know, remove yourself from situations when you're overwhelmed. I don't know if that's super vague but it all sounds like a meandering way of saying like listen to your feelings. <laughs> Thank you for your questions. Data asks do you have recurring themes in your dreams and if so would you care to elaborate? I've been having a lot of like classic genuine nightmares lately which has never really been a thing for me. Like I'm sure I've had them. And uh, through most of my 20s, I had sleep paralysis, which comes with its own, you know, audio visual experiences. But I've never just had like vivid nightmares where I'm realistically killed. And that's been happening a lot lately. I'd say the recurring theme is either there's a ghost in my home, and that usually segues into paralysis. Uh, it's always like in the dream, I'm, I'm frozen by fear when this uh, creepy old man ghost appears. And then it's like, I can't move. Oh, I actually can't move. Oh, I'm asleep. I need to get out of this. And the other one is just 
you know, I'm hit by a stray bullet and I have to deal with the aftermath for a few seconds before violently waking up, um, which is interesting because I don't actually know what it feels like to be shot, but you know, hats off to my brain because it, it can't be far off. Thank you for your question. Octo asks, how you doing? You happy and stuff? Uh, I'll say I have more moments of happiness than I had last year, which is enough for me. What are some things you've made that you like slash are important to you? I, I am quite pleased with the new logo I made, especially since I could finally abandon the word diaries from it, which was just this baggage carried over from an older iteration. Feels like a rebirth, feels like freedom, um, and the new music like turned out close to what I was aiming for. 3. What makes you think, fuck yeah, I'm awesome. I, I don't think I'm capable of that emotion. Sometimes I'll write something that sounds like it could be smart, and I'll, I'll sit back and I'll make like a... <laughs> kind of sound. And and I think that is similar to that feeling. Four, what's the best gift you received? You know, the strongest thing that comes to mind is not really anything physically significant. The last year and a half or so was kind of a, a rough time for me for a lot of reasons. That ended with the pandemic starting and I had to face some things about my mental health. It was just an all-time low for your boy. Just like at the right timing, someone ordered me a pizza. And you know, it just wound up being a very symbolic pizza to me. It was like, everything, everything's gonna be okay. You're gonna get through this kind of pizza. And that person knows who they are, so I would like to thank them, and I would also like to thank Papa John's. Five, a titty vampire or ass cannibal. Uh, look, I'm not gonna have you debase this video, okay? I'll not have you forcing me to go blue, but I guess at Games Brit asks, are there any games you started making a video on but eventually gave up on? Do you do YouTube full time? If not, what do you do to support yourself for a living? Oh yeah, uh, I think the one I made it the furthest on was Rogue Warrior. Uh, I was in the editing stage of it and I realized that like, I fucking hate this game. <laughs> And I really would like to think about anything else. Um, so that was just kind of scrapped. And yes, for now, I'm able, at, at the very least, to pay rent and feed myself, which is you know, all I really care about. The fact that I am housed and using the internet at this moment is, is a thanks to you know, all those that support me. Thank you for your question. Van the Cheese in One asks, one, which cryptid would you date? Um, I've been working on a thing with my sleep paralysis demon, but you know, they're are playing hard to get. Two, favorite recent indie games? Uh, I honestly haven't played many in a while other than ones that wind up on my channel, so I feel like you're often up to date with the games I've played. And, uh, and my answer would be, you know, half things on the channel and half ones that came out like two years ago. I should probably play more games in general, but this is just the curse of spending all your time fretting about a YouTube channel, yet also being slow to produce anything for it. So, check out Paratopic, I guess. Oh, and, and uh, No One Lives Under the Lighthouse for another kind of cozy retro horror game. Three, why Supernatural? Love your vids, hope you're doing well. Praise to the Ascension. It's not Christmas time yet. I thought it would be a more interesting and varied show to examine than one I'm like blinded with love for, you know what I mean? Yeah, but we'll, we'll see uh, how long it takes before I regret that decision. Thank you for your question. Torini asks, what other game most deserves The Driver Is You on its soundtrack? Also, any dream collaborations you'd like to make with another video essayist? Uh, I don't know if they ever do like a Tank Girl game. <laughs> I, I could see it being on that soundtrack. Um, and I, I don't, I don't have enough confidence in my own output to think about collaboration. I just feel like I would be dragging down someone else's work. Not saying I'm, you know, completely opposed to it as, as I have contributed to other channels before, but I'm, I'm real skittish about it. Having said that, I would absolutely appear on AVGN. Face reveal and everything, I don't give a fuck. Also, he has to say ass at least three times in the video. Also, Mike Matei cannot be within 100 miles of the set. Those are my conditions. Thank you for your question. <laughs> Cuddle baby, old spicy ball asks, I need to know what your favorite flowers is are to be honest. Also, is Beckett a werewolf? Um, I like the big stinky one, and the one that ate the Simpsons, and the, uh, fucked up ones around Chernobyl. Also, let me answer that second part with another question. Is Beckett a man that turns into a wolf sometimes? Uh, yeah. <laughs>
I think so. Thank you for your question. Julian asks, how spicy do you like your food? Like this much? Gah, fuck you, Discord. I don't know what that was about. Uh, I feel like I kind of go ham with spicy when it, when it comes to Mexican food. Like I will drown things in salsa or hot sauce. I think I can't do Thai food with their metric of spicy. I, I always go in confident. Like they usually have a, a number scale, one to 10 or something. And I'll be like, five sounds good. It's right there in the middle and I, I I can't hang. It hit different. Thank you for your question. Fucked up rhythm ask, when are you gonna start making Gabber as a side project? I have considered it, believe me. It's just one of a mountain of things I'd like to devote some time to. I even tried to fine tune a good uh, Gabber kick, which, which I, I feel like is the key to everything. I got that going, so uh, stay tuned, I guess. Thank you for your question. Zogingu asks, I'm really impressed with the quality of your videos and the rate that you produce them. Can you tell us about your work ethic? It's just all I fucking think about. <laughs> I, I try to spend as much time as I can always working on something in some way. I do have what you might call content brain, which is helpful if you want to make content, but uh, disruptive to having a, a normal balanced existence. So I think a lot of the perceived quality is the result of overthinking and tinkering. If there's some small way I think something can be enhanced, I, I will do that even if I know there's going to be like one or two people that actually notice it. And I'm constantly terrified that something has become boring. So, you know, the more asides or cutaways I can throw in the better. I have to watch these a lot and I pretty much hate it by the time I press publish but I think I've done something correctly if I can say well at least it's not like dry. So to make production move faster I, I create these sort of template files that have everything I would normally need already prepared and then after the editing process I have this final step where it's like a made up final step where I have this solid but not too interesting video laid out and I kind of just take a hammer to it, uh, cut out things I don't feel like, add anything, uh, throw in cutaways or weird editing gags or something. It's like the gold flakes I sprinkle on a gas station ice cream cone. Thank you for your question. A guy in a jacket asks, Hello, Mr. Beard. I have some hard-hitting questions here. Ahem. Sleeping with socks on, yes or no? How do you get the courage to share your work with other people? Fall, winter, summer, or spring? Cat or dog? How do you keep the whispers at bay? I can't think of more right now, but I'm sure I'll spout more useless crap later. I cannot sleep with socks uh, because I live in a place that would not allow that because every part of me is on fire when I sleep. But thankfully, uh, where I'm staying now during the winter, the place remains like perpetually frozen and it's it's just like heaven. Um, how did I get the courage to share my work? I don't, I don't know if I have that courage even now. Every video I post, there's a good hour or two of me just staring at the publish button and having a panic attack. I think initially what led me, you know, to publishing the first video was uh, I wouldn't necessarily have lost if it was a failure. The worst case scenario is it dies in obscurity and I live to make another one and uh, follow winter summer spring fall for the vibe the aesthetic but winter because i just like being cold which here isn't even that cold but it's you know some kind of respite i've never had a great experience with a cat so i appreciate them a lot from a distance uh, i have had a dog and i think they are beautiful expressive idiots and I, i've almost crashed my car just trying to get a look at them so yeah i'll say dog how do you keep the whispers at bay uh, I don't know, listen to a podcast. Thank you for your question. Phileo Fish asks, best Sisters of Mercy album? Uh, maybe the EP collection, Some Girls Wander by Mistake. I feel like there's a, a rawness or a purity and simplicity to a lot of those tracks that I'm a fan of. One of few bands that I actually really like hearing live recordings of. So that uh, BBC Sessions album that came out recently was pretty neat. Thank you for your question. Mr. A asks, I've recently started watching The X-Files mostly due to your insistent need to mention some of the premises of episodes in your Supernatural videos. You're welcome. And I'm liking it a lot so far. So out of curiosity, I was wondering what are some of your favorite episodes from the show or if there are any episodes you think are a little overrated in your opinion. Favorite episode musings of a cigarette smoking man just such a wildly interesting episode that focuses on like you know one of the most interesting characters in the show life is like a box of chocolates cheap thoughtless perfunctory gift that nobody ever asks for 
Squeeze and Tombs, both both great. I like uh, Paper Hearts and Beyond the Sea, which has a great performance by uh, Brad Dorf. Uh, I have a weird affinity for the episode Blood, which I don't think was like a big hit, unless I'm mistaken. It's the one where all the subliminal messages appear on devices. It's like a technophobia premise, but it, it always captured my imagination that it's left so unresolved. And at the end, Mulder and Scully are just like stumped defeated um the final moments of that one just kind of stayed with me for some reason I, d I don't know about overrated episodes because a lot of the a lot of those are rated highly for a reason maybe home like it's a good episode but a lot of what makes it memorable is that it's fucked up it's lack of chill is really just w what's given it longevity thank you for your question lego yoda asks are there any game genres you enjoy playing that haven't been covered on the channel like multiplayer shooters mmos some rts games stuff like that i i do partake in those but i i don't know if i'd be compelled to cover any of them yet there are some that i I think could fit the vibe of the channel at least. But that's a story <laughs> for another day. Thank you for your question. Julian asks, pizza or pasta? If pasta, what's your preferred pick? And if pizza, what's your favorite topping? Also, lasagna is a valid choice, but it is neither pasta nor pizza. It is the holy matrimony of both and objectively the best choice. Okay, so the, the topping, the topping isn't the important part. I'll just, I'll take your basic pepperoni pizza, uh, but here's what you do. You take a bottle of tapatio, and you, uh, you empty it onto that pizza. And then you thank me later. Thank you for your question. Aubrey asks, describe your perfect day. Uh, if this is an unattainable fictional perfect day, I've just posted a video. I'm giving myself a day or two to collect my thoughts on what to do next. Anything is possible. There's either pizza or carne asada fries involved and I will be watching a haunting in a freezing dungeon while someone gives me that you know you know that head scratchy device that's like a bunch of metal wires with a with rubber bits at the end they're kind of doing that same thing that's it really just a moment where my brain is off and i'm comfortable thank you for your question league of struggle asks have you heard the song uh fucking hell yeah i have you kidding me dude <laughs> try to say bro and dude at the same time brood kidding me love rock music i love math i love spirals I love wacky time signatures. I don't know what time it is, dude. Love not putting an album out for a decade and then putting out the worst album ever. <laughs> I'm joking, okay? Don't chuck the chip trip on me. Oh! What's your favorite episode of A Haunting? Great timing. The one with Sobek, the ancient Egyptian uh, ghost demon. I think, uh, you know, all seven or so seasons are just working up to the payoff of that episode. I love that show. I could watch people confuse mental illness for demon possession all day. Thank you for your question. Jay asks, how was your high school experience like? I'm sure it was the same amount of miserable it is for most people, right? I mean, I feel like you could look at my channel and the things I do here and surmise something didn't work out. Something's unresolved. Thank you for your question. Oh, Jay also asks, where did your fixation on older games come from? Do you believe that older games are better than current titles? Top five Silent Hill tracks. One of them has to be a vocal track or else. Uh, yeah, again, these are just the games I grew up with, my introduction to the medium, and as a result, the ones I formed a connection with and that resonated with me. I don't know if they're better. They were just you know of a formative era in gaming. And you can even see that many uh, modern indie games are, are trying to capture things accomplished in games from the 90s and early 2000s. And getting close, you know, but there's a lot Lot that you just can't replicate there's certainly a lot of like quality of life variety and accessibility things that make games better now even older ones as evidenced by how night dive and others i can't remember uh remaster games so i do think i have uh, perhaps a preference for them but that's not to say i think that modern games can't match or exceed older games i try not to be the kind of person that gets locked into this nostalgia bubble sort of thing because i think you you cut yourself off from a lot of great things still being made top five silent hill tracks uh get the vocal one out of the way first uh you're not here I'd, I'd almost say seeing Silent Hill Revelations in theaters was worth it, uh, just to hear that song in a theater. Um, Terror in the Depths of the Fog? Traversing the Portals of Reality? Killing Time? And 
sickness unto foolish death. And I hope you know that has been the hardest question so far, but thank you for it. Sargon of Acab asks, what vaccine did you take? Uh, I don't know. It had a picture of a horse on the box, but thank you for your question. Isaac, number one Slipknot fan, asks, what did you think of the Joker movie? Well made, well performed, but like, I just want to see him fight Batman. I, I don't really care that he invented 4chan or whatever. Thank you for your question. As Danto asks, Coke or Dr. Pepper? Coke? Thank you for your question. Bippity Jones asks, what's the thickest soup you can slurp? I don't know how you knew this, but I've been eating a lot of soup lately. Big fan of Progresso's chicken and rotini. Thank you for your question. B Brown asks, I know you've collaborated with Mandalore in his video on the Gothic remake teaser. Are there any other creators you want to or are planning to collab with? Planning, no. Uh, as I said at some point earlier, uh, I, I'm skittish of the idea, just out of lack of confidence and uh, social anxiety. But I have also appeared in a Melon Man video, and I did the theme song for Static Night, which is the podcast Sphere Hunter and the Gaming Bridge Show started. So, you know, I do stuff. Thank you for your question. Otter Soldier asks, what do you enjoy about making slash sharing content? Like what part of it is most satisfying? And if I'm allowed to, if money wasn't an issue, anywhere you'd like to travel? Probably somewhere in the editing process when all the different elements that I've worked on are just like locked into place and it starts to look like a finished thing. Uh, there is something exhilarating about that. And also just seeing that people are watching it and have their own thoughts about it. People are calling me an SJW or a, a shit lib or something. Just, it's nice knowing that I've opened a dialogue and affected someone with my creation. If I could travel anywhere, probably Japan, you know, go broke buying toys. Also, I'd like to see a haunted castle in Ireland, and I'd like to explore an abandoned nuclear shelter uh, somewhere in Eastern Europe. Doesn't really matter where, I'm sure that just got one on every block over there. Thank you for your questions. CJAM496 asks, what was the worst album you've heard from a band you love? Uh, America K Can't by Ministry. Very important, formative band for me. I like a lot of their discography, uh, but holy shit, I can't deal with them anymore. I, I don't go to Ministry when I want to hear fucking samples of Trump and like really toothless industrial metal for dads. Thank you for your question. Lily asks, what is a game you enjoy that you suspect would surprise people? Deus Ex Invisible War and Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, as in not Tactics, just Brotherhood of Steel for Xbox, uh, which I'm very aware are both the black sheeps of their respective franchises, and I will say no more because I would like to explain myself sometime in video format. But I don't know, more more tangible answer. I've had a, uh, a now shameful um, appreciation for the output of Blizzard, uh, you know, World of Warcraft and uh, Overwatch included. I gotta say, not so much anymore, but I've spent some time on them. Thank you for your question. Lego Yoda asks, is there any chance you'll ever cover Echo Knight 2 with the fan translation? Yes. Thank you for your question. Sleepy Poss asks, I know it's pretty far outside the sphere of games you usually cover on your channel, but have you ever played Bloodborne? It seems like a goth gamer staple, so I'd be curious to know your thoughts on it, if it's something you've played. I've played it a bit, and uh, I, I love the aesthetic and the soundtrack, but I just don't really get anything out of like Dark Souls and Souls-like games. I get the appeal of the format, and I live with a huge Dark Souls fan that has created a little shrine to all their Souls memorabilia and special editions, but it doesn't personally, uh, like gameplay-wise, tick any boxes for me other than, you know, I like the themes and the visuals. It's a, it's a game I, I enjoy watching people play, but, but yeah, I. I don't, I don't personally get anything out of playing them. I'm sorry, and thank you for your question. Alexander452 asks, any good book recommendations? Been reading about cannibalism a lot lately. Not too sure why, not gonna examine it, but check out Eat Me, A Natural and Unnatural History of Cannibalism, and The Indifferent Stars Above, which is about the Donner Party. Thank you for your question. Scoops asks, best second wave black metal project? Uh, th that's tough. Probably Olver, because uh, they wrote some of what I'd consider the best black metal of the era, and then continue to change shape and evolve and, you know, experiment beyond black metal. I r respect that willingness to change shape a lot, but as far as a, like a black metal band that stayed black metal, uh, probably Immortal, just like infinitely listenable, can have that on at any time, very catchy and fun, and they've, uh, they fit the, the aesthetic of everything, but 
I feel like they kept more of a sense of humor about it than other bands. Like They're kind of like the face of the meme now. You know, when you look at their album covers and them looking like goofballs in the snow. It's a very fun music video. But it, it is a shame that this is the time that they were playing with Hellhammer, uh, who is fa very talented drummer, uh, also complete fucking idiot, uh, which is a shame because <laughs> he's collaborated with uh, many of my favorite black metal bands. He's very prolific, uh, but but you know represents the worst of the genre. That's that's the gamble you make when you when you listen to to black metal. That's why whenever I find a new band that I like, I have to Google you know their name NSBM question mark. You know sometimes sometimes I I miss it, and uh, I don't know if it's still up. There's a video where I like I'm talking about a band, and I, and I said like uh, yeah, if you like Hate Forest, you might like this band. <laughs> And then later I was like, uh-oh, <laughs> whoops. Anyway, thank you for your question. Zazzy asks, what is the best video game crow? Uh, this one. Thank you for your question. Mild asks, what would be your ideal Twin Peaks inspired role-playing video game? I think LA Noir was like not that great a game, but it had a lot of interesting investigative elements that I felt should have been further explored. Like not just in that game, like in other games, I, I feel like there are some cues we could have taken from that. And um, I would mix bits of that, put an emphasis on exploration. And like, I like the way Disco Elysium handled things like your stat upgrades with, through clothing items and uh, having unconventional uh, attributes. Not necessary, but I'm sure we could find a weird way of, uh, a, a weird excuse to, to shoot a bunch of dudes. Like, uh, you gotta take out a bunch of tulpas that blend into Twin Peaks. You know, but they act sort of weird and you, you gotta like detect if they are the original person or not. I feel like there's some uh, spark of an idea in there somewhere where like you do have to do that, uh, you know, reading people's personalities, like mini game thing, but it's like in service to like, are you the real person or not? Anyway, thank you for your question. Game Master asks, how do we become a cool kid such as yourself? Is there a manual to this or something? Uh, I don't know. I, I had to get to 30 before before anyone ever expressed that, so it's, it's all new to me. Thank you for your question. Siren Balakdo asks, why do you keep calling me, asking me about my car's warranty policy? And what is your favorite video game of the 2010s? Finally, how are you doing? Hey, why do you keep hanging up on me? And of the decade, I don't fucking know all the games that came out then. <laughs> um, there was like two Bioshocks that came out in that time. Alan Wake, Max Payne 3, Control, Disco Elysium, Prey, Breath of the Wild, Portal 2, Gone Home. One of those, I say with zero confidence because uh, I, like I'm only thinking in bigger well-known titles. Um, how am I doing? I'm okay. I'm very sweaty because I can't have my fan on while I record and I'm a little hungry. Thank you for your question. Johnny Akiba asks, what's your favorite Mountain Dew to do? Uh, Kickstart, Orange Citrus. They have a new one called Rise Orange Breeze. That is all right. Good alternative if you can't get Kickstart. Thank you for your question. Bub Baylor asks, when you get Cheeto dust on your hands, do you lick your fingers or wipe them off on your pants like a degenerate? Firstly, I wouldn't be caught dead eating Cheetos. This is a pirate's booty house, and I wash my hands afterward like a human. Thank you for your question. Eris asks, do you believe in any innocent superstitions? Do you play board games? And if so, what are your favorites? Who is your fictional sweetheart, not counting the redhead vampire? I think more so than believing in superstitions, I believe that the belief can have some kind of positive real world outcome. Like I've had an ex that would smudge people's homes with burning sage, you know, that the owners had a bad vibe about, and it did help ease their minds about it. So even in that moment, I understood, you know, oh, it's better now. So sure, in a way I'd buy that did something, uh, even if it's a placebo. Uh, for board games, th there was a time I got really into living card games. Uh, I don't know if that counts. Mainly Lord of the Rings and Arkham Horror. Can be fun, but also uh, it gets expensive. But as far as uh, traditional board games, Betrayal at House on the Hill is pretty cool. Thank you for your question. Oh, also uh, favorite fictional sweetheart, uh, that Shiba Inu that was in control of Silent Hill. Thank you for your question. And thanks to everybody for 
your question. Uh, my main fear about this format is always uh, that there will be no questions, so I'm happy that there are. Sorry if I didn't get to yours. Maybe I'll do this again sometime if uh, people wind up liking it. Thanks for being there. Thanks for supporting me. Please, uh, I don't know. If you're watching this, you probably already subscribed and, uh, and, and liked and uh, bell rung, but you know, you know what to do. You're great. Well, bye. bye, bye.